so what i wanted to show you is using this sort of explanation i can draw maps like this so for this case you see this the base page the base blue page it, it's it's built with pages of pieces of cardboard so that there's a bottom cardboard piece which has the largest area then there's another cardboard piece which has a lower uh, which has a lesser area then there's a third cardboard piece placed on top of it which has a um, further lesser area and we have built up a sort of pyramid or a mountain ship with the cardboard pieces so we can do that with this as well so you see all the points that were that that are at this edge of the cardboard piece they are at this height they, they are at a particular constant height given by the number corresponding to this height and we can have a, a bird's eye view so it's kind of like the mount fuji that i uh, looked into the example of mount fuji that i looked into only it's made of cardboard pieces and this is the bird eye view now what happens if i plot them on a piece of paper so you might have uh, seen these sorts of pictures in your old geography books these essentially represent the contour lines of a particular place so these for take any uh, line if you take any line the points that lie on that line will lie at a uh, same height so this point and let's say this point they lie on the same height let's take this point and let's take this point they lie on the same height so this is the concept of contour lines and this is the concept of uh, yeah now what we come to is let's move on to the subject of mathematics or in some sense economics as well so now we'll consider the three dimensional mathematical framework let's take a let's take a function z is a function of x and y so as i uh, told you about mount fuji there my independent variables x and y could have been taken as latitude and longitude of particular point so every latitude and longitude corresponds to a particular point on the surface of the earth and that point on the surface of the earth has a particular height so if a function is sort of like a machine so you give them some inputs and they pull a certain output from that so it's like i am giving a random latitude and i am giving a random longitude and what this machine or what the system does is it takes in these those two inputs uh, as latitudes and longitudes and what it does is just sort of some calculation and it sends me out as input the height of earth at that point at that latitude and longitude so that that's sort of a function that i discussed now that is yeah as i mentioned before x and y are my independent variables and z is my dependent variable so in case of mount fuji x and y were my latitudes and longitudes and z was the height at that point so what i'm doing is i'll take one illustration but this time it will be mathematical so yes that's not a mountain if you if you wonder that some if whether it's a mountain or not it's not a mountain it's basically a mathematical curve so this mathematical curve what i've done is i have let's mark these uh, six uh, pictures with numbers so it will be easier to refer to these so what i do is for let's take this these three curves are the same curves what happens is if i chop off as i mentioned before if i chop off the curve at a particular height so say this amount of height so what i have done is i have this time i tell my uh, what should i say analyst to chop off my curve no this time it's not a mountain so i chop off my function at a particular height or a particular z value so z is taken to be the height so x and y are on the x axis and y axis so these are, those are on the bottom and the height is taken as the z parameter so what i do is i chop off the mountain at a given value of z height and what i do is i ask my analyst to draw the cross section of that chopped off mountain or chopped off curve or chopped off um, function and what he does is he draws this picture so you see if i chop off this mountain i do get sort of this picture so that's what i get if i chop it off at a higher z value for this function i you see 
it's sort of a this infinite uh, uh what should i say it's sort of an infinite shape that i get so that's what the analyst did for me it chopped off my function at this given so i give my analyst the z value i tell him to cut it off let's say at a height of 5 units so i ask the uh, analyst to find both values of x and y which give me a z value of 5 so what the analyst does is the analyst puts forward all these points as the inputs which give me a output of 5 so if this point has a, a coordinate of let's say x1 y1 then if i put x1 and y1 as the input of this function i get 5 as my output because i had asked him to chop off the mountain at a height of 5 units or a z equal to 5 so what he does is he gives me those values of x and y which give me an output of 5 units so that is what happens in the third case as well here maybe the height is some seven units and what he does is he gives me those values of x and y which give me a z value of seven units let's take another example so uh, this is another curve again it kind of looks similar to the one that we did before it kind of has another two peaked mountain of sorts and what it and what my analyst does again is i give again a value of z so i give him a value of z and he gives me an x and y pair of uh, coordinates so that is what you need to remember what essentially are the inputs and what are the outputs so i give him the dependent variable value and he gives me the independent uh, coordinates that follow from that dependent variable for that particular fixed constant value of dependent variable so if I chop off my function at this, uh, so if like if my x moves in this direction and chops it off at this black line, then this is the chord, This is the set of points that I get. Please note that the points are essentially the uh, the points are on this line segment. They, it's like a shaded portion, and you might be tempted to say, okay, this point is also on the line. That's not on the line. Only the points that lie, where's my computer? Yeah, where's my pointer? <laughs> Only the points that lie on this border are considered. So this x, y coordinate gives me this value, at uh, this uh, height z. This x, y coordinate gives me this height z, or maybe on the other hand, on, on the other side of the mountain. But whatever, that is, that, is the, that is the essence of the story. So that is how we interpret level curves and level sets. Now, what are level curves and level sets? What happens is, if you're talking about three dimensions, so you see we are talking about three dimensions. So that's x, y, and on this section, this is a two-dimensional figure, this is a three-dimensional figure. So x, y, or you can take x, y, whichever axis you're uh, familiar with. If you look at this side, so if you're sitting at this uh, portion, then you might be one taking x as this uh, side and you might be taking y as this side. So that might be based on your alignment and uh, z is only visible at the third dimension so if you're talking about two dimensions you'll be talking about x and y and if you're talking about three dimensions you'll be talking about x y and z what we can do with this is if i draw this line then i draw two circles uh, like this and then i put the third circle in which corresponds to this then if i look at so Let's go back to the diagram that we were talking about. Uh, yeah. So if I draw this, I essentially make a two-dimensional representation of this three-dimensional figure. So it's like I am uh, taking a two-dimensional analog, analog analogy with respect to this three-dimensional figure. So it's like I'm taking a cross-sectional map. So that is how this uh, concept of level sets and level curves work. When I'm talking about three dimensions, I am calling it a level set. Uh, and when I'm talking about two dimension, I'm calling it a level curve. So these are level set, the points that lie on the level set, the points that are in the level set rather, and this is my level curve. So that is the basic concept of level curve and level set. So by conclusion, we can say that a level curve is a function f x comma y, uh, a level curve of a function f x comma y is the curve of the points x y where f x comma y is some constant value. 
A level curve is simply a cross section of the graph of z equal to fxy taken at a constant value, say z equals c. A function has many level curves as one obtains a different level curve for each value of c in the range of fxy. So let's take it again step by step and let's match it with the ones that we had studied till now. So a level curve of a function fxy. So we have a level curve for a particular function fxy. Say in my example, I was talking about height of Mount Fuji. So that was a particular function. Is a curve of the points xy. So as I mentioned before, it's a curve. So it's, it's, it's not a, a one dimensional thing or something. It's a, it's a curve. And it's based on the values of x and y. So this curve gives me different values of x, y, where f, x, y is some constant value. So I'm talking about those x, y pairs, or I'm talking about those latitude, longitude pairs, which give me a particular value of f, x, y. Or in other words, in terms of geography, it gives me different fixed values of height from the sea level. So a level curve is simply a cross section of the graph of z, f, x, y. In geography, uh, the level curve will simply be a cross section of the mountain that I've taken under consideration at a constant value, say z equal to c or at a constant height from sea level. So a function has many level curves. Of course, if I cut my mountain at different height, I'll get different level curves uh, to say. So as one obtains a different level curve for each value of c or in my case, uh, in geography's case, each value of height from sea level in the range of fx, y. So of course, in the range of fx, y also plays a very uh, important role. As I mentioned before, if you remember, the height of Mount Fuji, as I had mentioned, was some 3,775 meter or something of the sort. And uh, if I tell you to give me the isochron for a height of 5,746, that won't be considered because it's not in my range of fx y. My fx y was in some 2000 meters to 3776 meter, at most 3800 meter. So that needs to be the range of z. I can't give you a value of z that does not lie in the range. So the range of fx y or the range of z is of prime importance in case of level sets and level curves. So that is the basic story behind level curves and level sets.